Isn't it great being a perfect beekeeper and never making any mistakes at all? Oh, wait a minute. I don't know anybody like that. I'm not perfect and I've never met a perfect beekeeper. Sometimes we see YouTube videos where everything goes perfectly, but we, what we don't see is that it had to be filmed 20 times to get that <laughs> perfect shot or something. But yeah, there's no perfect beekeepers. But here's the thing. Some of you are kind of feeling bad because you didn't have a perfect year. And you probably, like me, made a few mistakes. Today, I want to talk about perfect beekeeping. Are you a perfect beekeeper? Can you be perfect? And we're going to have a coffee time. Got my coffee cup here ready. We're going to have a coffee time in just a little bit about how trying to be perfect probably isn't a very good thing. Isn't it hard to believe that this is October the 1st already? We're in fall. Where did summer go? <laughs> and all those beautiful days when we were out there working bees all last spring and summer, Boom, now we're into the, you know, the first of October already. And it looks like it, if you look around my property here, got a lot of leaves on the ground. All the fields are getting dried out. The crop in the fields are dry. And wow, you know, the air is kind of have, it has that feeling of fall. It's not very humid, very nice outside. But we got to get our bees ready for winter. And today I'm going to talk to you about why I have proven this year, like every year, I don't really get much fall flow from goldenrod. Now, I'm gonna show you how I measured that in you know, not a real scientific way, just kind of a backyard way of doing it. But I put this on my hive, this whole super, on a very strong colony. I made a video, you guys love that video, where we were adding extra wax to these frames. And we were gonna see, if we added extra wax, would it give them a push to draw those out faster and to test it, we left one frame right in the most critical spot, right in the middle, because that's where they would draw it out the most. So we did not wax the middle frame, but we waxed all the rest. And if you remember in the videos that I've made about this, they did an exceptionally well job at drawing this out within two weeks. We went back, we put this on, it says here, August the 19th, and then two weeks later and uh, to September, we went back and we checked it and all of you were just like, wow, I'm astonished at how well they drew all that wax out. And so many of you said, you know, that, that just sold it for me. I'm going to add more wax to my frames. Now, if this is your first time for watching me, uh, you didn't see that video, I understand. Thanks for watching. But um, you'll want to drop back and take a look. But you can see these frames. This is how much wax they drew out in that two-week two period. If you kind of look at it, you can see... It's more than just a piece of foundation. I'll show you a piece of foundation because we'll take a look at this frame here that was not any extra wax added to it, just the little wax that came from the company. And as you can see, it is nothing more than just a piece of foundation. Look at that, right? <laughs> but all the ones around it, all the ones next to it, uh, they actually drew this out within two weeks uh, rather nicely. And so the thing about it though, I went out there today and I took it off. We opened it up to see if it would possi possibly have some goldenrod nectar in it. And look, it was placed in here August the 19th and look at that. No wax and it has not been drawn out one single bit. Now, to be fair though, they didn't add any nectar to this super. Now, to be fair, you know, they have two deeps. They have another super that, that, uh, they, that are, that's on the top. And so it's very possible they could have brought some goldenrod nectar in and stored it in the two deeps below as winter food and also added it more to that top super, although it was mostly full. But this is just an indication they didn't go overboard. They're not going to just draw out and fill up a new super just because goldenrod is blooming at its maximum. And now our goldenrod is pretty much over. Goldenrod usually has a bright yellow color like this. But as it gets older, you can see where it starts to turn a bit more brown. So we're seeing more of the goldenrod in this area now turn brown, kind of done for the year. A lot of you met, left comments, just leave it on longer and they'll draw that middle frame out. And lo and behold, they did not. There is nothing, no wax at all added to that middle frame. And just to clarify, because I know this may be the first time you've seen 
uh, part of this experiment, the back part of it. And here is that uh, frame that I did not add any extra wax to, and I marked it no wax in W. It does have wax, again, it does have wax from the company. You can feel kind of stickiness of wax, but no pulling out at all on the one that we did not add wax to. Now you gotta go back and watch the video if you wanna see it. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can uh, watch the video where we actually started the experiment. I showed you how I put the wax on. But yeah, adding wax like this early in the year, like all of you guys getting your beads ready uh, for spring, your hives ready, then it would be just so beneficial to add more wax to it in the start of the spring so the bees can more quickly pull it out when they are bringing in excess nectar in the spring and early summer, they can just start filling these supers up. Another question you guys ask a lot about is, should I add extra wax to my brood frame uh, foundation in the brood box? Absolutely. Any frames that you're using that are plastic foundation like this, I know some people say that certain companies add more than others, but look, I like to coat it on crazy amounts, okay? Where do you get it? If you're a uh, two, three, four year beekeeper, you probably have extra wax from your cappings that you shaved off your honey supers when you harvested your honey. Uh, but if not, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can buy wax cappings. 100% pure beeswax is what you want. Uh, a lot of you ask me questions about, can I use 50% uh, beeswax and the other 50% is something else. Uh, paraffin or something, but no, I don't like to put anything in my in my hive except 100% pure beeswax. You can melt that down in a, in a simple pan that you dedicate for wax, like a, a hot skillet or something. Just make sure it's dedicated for wax because once you get it all waxed up, you're not going to use it to make hamburgers in after that. And if you take something out of your kitchen that is dedicated for cooking and use it to melt down wax, somebody will be upset with you if you're not in charge of the pans. <laughs> so be careful about that. So the rule of thumb is if you wanna get your frames drawn out, always think of it this way, put all your money on getting them drawn out in the first of the season. You gotta get your, uh, all these frames drawn out, whether it's super frames or it's your deep uh, brood box frames, work on putting them on the hive early in the year. Because once I get into July, I'm not trying to get any more wax drawn out. It's not worth it to me. At that point, I'm trying to get my uh, bees built up for winter. I'm putting all my focus in my bees, my control. So just get the frames drawn out in the season when the most bulk of the nectar is coming in. And then once the frames are drawn out, yeah, you can get more nectar to fill them up in, in late or midsummer, late summer, but you gotta get them drawn out early. I get so many of you that ask me questions later on in the season. Hey, can I still put a super on? Will they still draw my deep high body out? Can I add another uh, super full of just foundation? Will they draw that out in August? And so look, we did it and we got a little bit drawn out in August, late August actually. But remember, no nectar is in here. Not a disadvantage at all because actually this is gonna be a great super to put on in the spring because it's basically almost like 90% drawn out. So they're gonna just go to town once I drop this on there in the, in the spring of 2024. And we'll monitor it again. I'll keep all these dates on there. We can see how it progresses uh, next season. But this is, I mean, if you wanted to get it drawn out uh, and experiment with it, you could, like I did, add more wax to it. But just focus on the early part of the year to get all that foundation drawn out. Now, I've given a lot of talks this year to bee clubs and at different conferences. And I, I've given a talk about how beekeepers oftentimes start beekeeping and they have watched a lot of YouTube videos, thank you for watching, and they have read a lot of books maybe, they've taken a class or two, and they get into beekeeping thinking that they know enough to really make a great go at it, but then the bee season starts, and the bees start throwing some curve balls. Have you ever had a, a hive throw you a curve ball? And what I mean by that is, maybe the queen can't be found anymore. And it's like, oh no, where's my queen? Or maybe she's not laying well. And you're like, I'm not sure if I'm seeing eggs anymore. I don't see any larvae. I don't think their brood looks good. Maybe you get a laying worker. Just on and on, all these different challenges that your hive can throw at you, that even though you took a class, read books, watched videos, you're not quite sure what to do. Or if you did know the answer, you're not sure if it's a correct answer. So sometimes we struggle with what is the right answer to. Now, a lot of you that are new to beekeeping are finding it frustrating that you can't really find 
the correct answer to a question that you have. And we have the expression that says, if you ask 11 beekeepers one question, you'll get 12 different answers. Like I say before, it's not always a bad thing. Beekeeping oftentimes has many ways to do the right thing, right? It's still the right way to do it. It still works. It still makes honey. It still keeps bees growing in population. It still controls mites but there may be 12 different ways to do that. It doesn't make one guy or gal better than the other. It just means where they live, what the resources they have, their philosophy of beekeeping is gonna be a shade different, resulting in a slightly different approach. So don't freak out, calm down. I know we want only one formula to make all this work out right. And to be truthful with you, there are many formulas, right? And so a lot of times we, uh, we think it's our fault because well, that guy told us to do this, that lady told us to do that, and it didn't really work out like I thought. They were wrong. They, were, they may have been right. It just means that the bees just did not respond to that. It happens in every other walk of life. You know, we have a perfect solution that we apply, but whatever we apply the perfect solution for, it just doesn't work. Uh, you have that in the health industry. Some medications work perfectly sometimes on certain people, but then when applied to a different person with different physiology, different chemistry, makeup in their body, the treatment didn't work at all. Same treatment, same disease, same treatment. Some respond, some don't. Bees are that way as well. Sometimes you can use Formic Pro and you can get a really good mite kill. You can just drop mites almost down to nothing. And sometimes you can use Formic Pro from the same batch, almost on the same bees, and you just can't really seem to knock the bees, the mites down, the bees aren't really uh, showing that much improvement. So, you know, it's not always a perfect answer. And so you have to go into beekeeping knowing that I'm not gonna be perfect at this. And let's face it, we have life experiences that get in the way that keep us from spending as much time sometimes as we want to spend in our hives or need to. And being a perfect beekeeper is not something that any of us are ever going to achieve because of all the variables of not only knowledge, but the variations that we see in bees themselves, the weather, the climate, the pathogens, the type of uh, pests that bees will have, how many of those pests that they have, what they're coming in contact with and, and when they go out and forage. So it can be so different from hive to hive. Now, if you have more than one hive, you've already seen this. Side by side comparison in the same yard and you're treating both hives the same, you already see one hive is much different than the other. It's rare to see both hives doing identically the same. But what about you individually? Are you trying for perfection in your own life? I think a lot of times uh, we, uh, especially people my age, we were raised in a time when we really were told by our teachers, our coaches, our parents, that we need to achieve and accomplish something. You know, when, when we were raised, it was a very um, different world back in the 60s and 70s. And we were, we were really uh, pushed hard to, to achieve. And sometimes that push made us want to do things perfectly. I remember I played basketball when I was young. I started playing basketball in junior high. And back then, you know, you could make the first five, the five string, the first string. Uh, and so, you know, that was uh, an honorable thing. That meant you were good, right? So you practiced and you performed and you, you were out there shooting hoops all the time, free throws, so that when they did the tryouts, you could be on the first five. And uh, I made the first five, not because I was that good of a basketball player, because I was just giantly tall at my age. <laughs> and so that just kind of, uh, I grew into basketball. My skill level grew, but I got in there first just because I was insanely tall in junior, I was this height in junior high. <laughs> and so uh, a lot of times we work hard to become, you know, on in first place. We gotta be perfect at a sport. We have to be perfect the way we look sometimes. We really work hard to be perfect. And I'll tell you what, chasing the dream of being perfect will always disappoint you. It really will. Um, you can't look perfect all the time. You can't perform perfectly all the time. You're never gonna be that perfect person. And you need to stop pursuing perfection because it will really drive you insane. I think sometimes beekeepers get very, very disappointed in beekeeping because they thought 
that all the things that they had seen and thought about, it was going to be more of a perfect way to pollinate their apples and have extra honey to give to the family and just enjoy the nice outdoor activity of beekeeping. And let's face it, you do watch a lot of YouTube videos and we have the power of editing out things that are disasters and frustrating to us. And so when we make videos, sometimes you only watch the version where it does make it appear it's not that difficult. But in reality, it's very difficult. And uh, all of us that are, have been beekeeping a long time, we know that you can't stay a perfect beekeeper very long. You feel perfect when you install the package. You feel perfect when you get a nucleus for the first time. And you feel like, wow, this is really going good. I made my installation. The bees look healthy. Everything's going perfect. But I have found, especially after working with my Bee Team 6 mentorship program for nearly eight years now, found a lot of people get frustrated with beekeeping. I'm not sure what the dropout rate of beekeeping is, but it's got to be pretty high. It really does, because if you lose your bees the first year, then uh, it's hard for people to get back into it because they feel guilty that they allowed their bees to die. But again, the way to stay into beekeeping and the way to enjoy beekeeping is not look at it that is as something you have to perfect. Don't look at it as something you have to uh, overcome every single thing your first or two or four years. It takes a long time to learn all the nuances of beekeeping. So get out of your mind of, of being that perfect beekeeper. It's no reason to chase that dream. And so coffee time today is about, you know, not, not trying to pursue perfection. I mean, you've got to be yourself and none of us are made perfect. One of the ways that can help you uh, not really be so hard on yourself is stop being so hard on other people. Other people, maybe in your life, you're expecting perfection out of them. And that's not fair because let's face it, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, they're not perfect. And when we start feeling like other people around us that either you know we're partners with, married to, sons, daughters, parents, whatever, and we kind of get disappointed because they let us down. We have these high expectations of them being perfect and how they treated us, said something, do something. If you chase that, you're gonna be very disappointed. You're gonna be emotionally distraught all the time. And let's face it, if we ever get to the point where we reach a level of perfection, it won't last long. It won't take long before that level of perfection begins to fail. If you strive hard in your appearance to have a perfect face all your life, one day, if you live long enough, you'll look in the mirror and you'll say, I'm not a perfect, I don't have a perfect 30 year old face anymore. <laughs> it's inevitable, right? If you buy a perfect car, once you start driving it, it's no longer perfect anymore. So you can't hold perfection, even if you were able to achieve it. And it's the same way with bees. If you have a perfect bee yard, perfect apiary, zero mites all year, growth was exceptional, all your bee or your queen bees just laid 2,000 eggs a day, and you got millions of pounds of honey, that was this year. Next year, you're probably not gonna hold that level of perfection. Might as well adjust our hearts and our minds right now to realize we're okay being imperfect. I like hanging around imperfect people because I am one and I understand what it's like not to be perfect. And so once we all see each other as not perfect, we get along a lot better and stop having these unrealistic expectations. There's no perfect beekeepers. Nope, you're not going to find one on, on YouTube and you're not going to read a book written by a perfect beekeeper. In fact, it's better to read and watch somebody that admits, beekeeping has been hard for me. And I've made a lot of mistakes. And I've overcome those. I've found ways to work around it and adjust and survive it. Those are good stories to be a part of. And be sure and check out the book that Sherry and I wrote. Uh, this is a great starter book for you guys getting into beekeeping for the very first time. Backyard beekeeping, everything you need to know to start that first hive. So with spring coming, you need to get your mind wrapped around the very basic foundation of beekeeping. And this is gonna help you a lot. If you order it off our website, you'll get an autographed copy. You can get them off Amazon, but we can't autograph those. It must be kept in a big warehouse or something. And be sure and join me every Thursday night. I appreciate all of you dropping in on my live stream at 7 p.m. Central Time. I'd like to pick up the crowd there and have more of us join and a uh, great time for question and answers. Great time to kind of get an idea of what's going on in your life. You can share your thoughts and questions with me live every Thursday night here on YouTube. 
I'll leave a link right here on the screen and in the description where you can join my live stream. Now, even though we can't be perfect beekeepers, we can do a lot to gain a lot of knowledge and a lot of education to understand how to be better at beekeeping, and we should strive that. And so I have a whole bunch of online courses that will help you be a better beekeeper, hopefully making fewer mistakes and keeping healthier bees. So check the link out right here for my online courses. It's just like me teaching you right now. It's not a big Zoom meeting or anything. They don't go away. You can watch them forever, but it's just me teaching you. Well, not like right now because it is a little bit of uh, headshots like this, but there is a lot of it in the field showing you and uh, teaching you how to handle bees, how to work your bees and all that right in the field. So check it out. I appreciate you doing that. Hey, I got a great video if you haven't seen this one where we did the wax experiment. It's going to be a good one for you to get ready for next spring and making sure your frames and foundation are waxed up, ready to go, especially for you new beginners. Check it out right here. I'll see you over there.